Hello and welcome to another TLDR UK video. Fox News is a major name in news. The US media giant is a pretty unique beast, at least from a British perspective. Its hyper-partisanship just isn't something you see in Britain's TV news, and even its general style of personality-driven news programming is pretty foreign to British audiences. However, Fox did broadcast in the UK for a while though, accessible to Sky customers until 2017, when the channel was pulled. According to officials at the time, the channel was removed due to poor viewership in the UK, but calling it a decision to take Fox News down is possibly generous, as it happened at the same time the UK's regulator Ofcom ruled that the network had broken their rules. So, given the failure of Fox News in the UK, it's surprising that not one, but two companies are hoping to follow in their footsteps, starting Britain's own Fox News-esque TV channels, focusing on right-wing issues, opinions, and personality-driven content. With both channels racing to launch first, the question is whether the British public actually wants this kind of news, and if they can survive without Ofcom taking away their licence. Before we get going with that though, it would be weird for us to talk about these two upstart news networks without talking about our own. TLDR News has been running for around four years now, with a mission to create objective, impartial, fact-based news videos. Since then, we've grown into a small team, creating content that spans the globe. If you want to support our goal and help us to continue to grow our team, then you can back us on Patreon, where you'll get a whole bunch of perks in return for your support, including our exclusive live events. Or, of course, you can make a one-off PayPal donation if you prefer. Both are linked down below. Thanks for your support, and thanks for believing in our vision. So, before we get to the key questions, whether the British public want this kind of foxified news, and if the UK's media laws will even permit it, let's first look at the landscape of British news and the two channels that are trying to disrupt it. When looking at television, the biggest players are BBC News, Sky News, ITV News, and Channel 4 News. Of these four, the first two broadcast 24 hours a day, while the other two broadcast at set times on their home channels. Unlike the US and other countries around the world, the UK's TV channels are, or attempt to be, pretty impartial. It should come as no surprise that the BBC is always aiming for impartiality, but even their commercial counterparts, like Sky News, aim for a broadly neutral approach. There is a bit of variation here, with Channel 4 leaning more left and Sky more right. But on none of these channels will you find characters comparable with Fox News' Tucker Carlson or MSNBC's Rachel Maddow. There is plenty of partisanship in the UK's print and online media though, with them generally leaning to the right. But TV news just doesn't have this. It's exactly this setup that the people behind News UK and GB News are hoping to take advantage of, specifically the weaknesses of the BBC. Like I said, BBC News' explicit stated objective is to produce neutral and apolitical reporting, but increasingly people on both sides of the aisle have called this into question. It's almost ironic that some on the left regularly accuse the BBC of pandering to the government and regurgitating the government's agenda, while commentators on the right have nicknamed it the Brexit bashing corporation, based on their belief that the BBC is against the right and specifically against Brexit. Now this isn't the video for us to talk about where the BBC lands on the political spectrum, or if they succeed in their neutral objectives. Maybe we'll do that in another video, but now's not the time. Ultimately, it doesn't even really matter. Even if we were all to agree that the BBC falls dead in the middle when it comes to their reporting, the perception from many on both sides is that they favour the other. This has led to some, especially on the right, looking across the Atlantic and growing jealous of the news coverage in America. And when there's demand like that, you know that someone's going to step in and try and fill it. In fact, there's two groups. Let's start with GB News. GB News is a news channel set to launch this spring, having secured £60 million worth of funding and approval from Ofcom. Like their soon-to-be rival, their objective is to cater to the right, a group they perceive as being underserved and forgotten by mainstream TV news. Once they launch, they're planning to broadcast on TV 24 hours a day, with a real focus on conservative opinions and personalities. The project first got a lot of press when they managed to sign Andrew Neil as their chairman and star presenter. 
Neil, formerly of the BBC and chairman of The Spectator, is a huge media heavyweight and a major catch for the network. When it comes to other potential stars of the channel, a number of names have been thrown around, from Nick Ferrari, Rachel Johnson and Julia Bartley Brewer, to even Nigel Farage and Piers Morgan. Ultimately though, no names have been officially confirmed yet, and most of this list have also been associated with News UK, so it seems like these news personalities are waiting to see where they can get the best offer. It's reasonable they're holding out too, because the other side certainly isn't short of money. News UK is being launched by the Murdochs, yeah, the same Murdochs behind Fox News. That's not to say that they hold the monopoly when it comes to big media backers though, with Liberty Global's owner John Malone, media giant Discovery and others backing GB News. GB News also has Angelos Frangelopoulos, who, while not a household name, was credited with turning Sky News Australia into a significantly more right-wing network. Regardless though, News UK and Rupert Murdoch are certainly hoping to land some big talent for their network too, with the aforementioned Piers Morgan and even Lord Alan Sugar supposedly associated with the channel. Unlike GB News though, News UK isn't planning to launch 24-hour coverage, instead offering an evening-only service, focusing on big names and high production values rather than 24-7 coverage. They're also focusing more online, with the channel said to be mainly delivered through online streaming. However, they have been issued an Ofcom license, allowing them to broadcast on TV too if they want. So those are the two players. Both are set to launch this spring, and both are hoping to court a conservative audience that's grown tired of the mainstream offering provided by the BBC and others. The problem is that they might have misjudged public sentiment. Believing the BBC has moved too far from the centre, they think that the goal's wide open for them, but is it? There is certainly data that backs up their point of view, with a survey from YouGov finding that only 29% of people thought that the BBC reflected their views, with 33% of people saying the BBC represented their views worse today than they did a year ago, showing a substantial decline. Maybe this is the critical shift. People want the news to reflect their views. Maybe in a digital world that's increasingly customised and tailored to you, people don't want objective, fact-driven reporting, unless they like the facts that are being used, of course. But while some people might not feel represented by the BBC, there is still some trust there, with 78% of people surveyed saying that their news is high quality, and 71% saying that it's trustworthy. Moreover, more than 90% of the population still use BBC News. So maybe this is the bigger problem for the new networks. They might have identified some real anger aimed at the BBC. Some on the left and right have deeply held and sometimes legitimate grievances with the BBC. But have they got caught in their own echo chamber? After all, despite wealthy backers on both sides, they're businesses and therefore need viewers. At the end of the day, Britain's only home to 65 million people. Only so many of them are right wing, and only so many of them are actually interested enough to tune in regularly. That's only going to get worse too. TV might have seen a slight resurgence during the pandemic, but on the whole, viewership of TV and TV news more specifically is declining. In fact, their US template, Fox News, has an average age of 68, so not only is the general audience declining for TV, but those who do watch this kind of thing aren't exactly prime fodder for advertisers. And to be blunt, they're not actually going to be around for that long. Which is a big issue, especially because they'll have to compete with Britain's already strong right-wing media outlets. And this is actually an important point. The US's media ecosystem includes a lot of big names that skew left. Here's the UK's print media again. It skews significantly right, especially when you take out some of the papers with smaller circulations. The US, however, goes the other way. And when we add in TV news like MSNBC and CNN, it's clear that Fox fills a gap in the market. A gap that maybe doesn't exist in the UK. And it's doubly difficult because the UK has a major state broadcaster in the BBC. US news networks don't have to compete with a behemoth with 90% market penetration and millions of dollars to spend. In Britain, they do. Even if these new networks do garner an audience though, that doesn't necessarily mean there'll be a success in Britain because of the UK's Ofcom regulations. 
Britain generally has stronger control and rules guiding the news and TV broadcasts than many other countries. And any Fox News imitators should be concerned that they don't suffer the same fate as Fox in the UK. Ofcom has a set of media impartiality rules, as outlined in Section 5 of the British Broadcasting Code. The gist of which is that news in whatever form is reported with due accuracy and presented with due impartiality. It's this principle that Fox News broke in the UK, breaching rules 5.9, 5.11 and 5.12. You're welcome to read these rules yourself, they're linked down below, but they broadly relate to ensuring that a balance of opinions are voiced on discussion, debate and talk shows, explicitly preventing presenters from taking advantage of their regular appearances to promote their views in a way that compromises the requirement for due impartiality as well as ensuring that when handling major controversies, a significant range of viewpoints are included and given due weight. Ultimately, it's these rules that tripped up Fox, with them specifically being called out for their hosts being prominent supporters of the Trump administration, as well as criticising the way that they reported on the Manchester Arena attack. However, Fox News isn't a UK news network. It's not calibrated to fulfil Ofcom's rules. In fact, it didn't even try these new channels will certainly be more savvy, attempting to balance viewpoints a little more, as well as offering varied perspectives. This is something that other outlets have been doing for a while now, especially when it comes to talk radio. LBC, for example, has a number of right-wing hosts, but manages to dodge impartiality rules by including a handful of more left-leaning voices. It's possible that these news channels could do a similar thing, including a smattering of left-wing presenters and this could actually work out in their favour. As outlined in the case study about Sky News Australia we mentioned earlier, the channel almost managed to weaponise its left-wing contributors. By choosing centre-left guests and hosts, they were able to shift the Overton window. Host shooting down ideas presented by centre-left contributors gave the impression to those watching that these were the most progressive voices, distorting the political spectrum and making even the most centrist viewpoints seem like the furthest left views possible. Anyway, time will tell what will happen in the UK, and with both channels granted permission to air by Ofcom, and both seemingly eager to get started, it doesn't seem like we'll have long to wait. What do you think about this whole situation though? Will it give people the news they want and deserve, giving them voices that represent their ideology? Or does this represent further polarisation and a continued decline of debate and understanding in Britain's political realm? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to support our apolitical and objective brand of news, then be sure to subscribe. You can also donate and help us grow further through Patreon or PayPal. Both of those are linked down below. Special thanks to those who already back us on Patreon and make videos like this one possible.